Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Jackie Lee from Google, and today my talk is about identifying and eliminating contention from booting concurrent SMP VNs. Uh, okay, so this talk will be organized in two parts. First, I will give some background on the experiment setup and explain how we identify the contention. In the second part, we will focus on one of the possible solutions that remove the log contention at the software level. And then we will discuss how we can generally deal with the contention when a piece of hardware is overcommitted. For example, re-limiting the resource request from the guest. Okay, so um, first, uh, what is an SMP VN? Some of you might already know this term, but for those who are not familiar with it, just one sentence, SMP is a short name for SCV SMP, which stands for Secure Encrypted Virtualization uh, dash secure nested paging. This is an advanced memory encryption technology provided by AMD and compared to its previous generations, SCV SMP adds new hardware based security protections, which we will talk about this new hardware a little bit later. So naturally we run tons of tests before qualifying the new technologies like SMP. And one of them is measuring the boot time performance of guest VNs. Basically, we boot a couple of VNs at the same time and measure the time from issuing the command to bring up the VN to the time VN enters the guest UV. And we draw this picture to show the relationship between the number of VNs booting concurrently and the average boot time for all VNs. So as you can see in this graph, uh, this graph sh uh, in the slides shows an interesting finding that the boot time of VN is actually increased when we have more VNs booting together. And this is actually specific to SMP VNs. For a normal VN, we will actually see a flat horizontal line. So what happens? Like why are those SMP VNs so special? We investigated and found from the log that those VNs are literally spending most of its time booting, uh, its booting time to initiate the RMP entries in a loop. Okay, so, uh, what is an RMP and why does the SMP VN needs this extra step for initialization? RMP stands for reverse map table and this is actually the new hardware introduced in the SMP to provide strong memory integrity protection. This piece of hardware is used to check the owner of every page in the memory to make sure that only the owner of the pages can write it. And when initializing a new guest VN, the hypervisor would need to issue a new x86 instructions called RMP update to make sure the memory is registered under this new guest VN. And after realizing that RMP update might cause the problem, we changed the experiment setup a little bit to investigate this new behavior in SMP. So instead of bringing up multiple VNs, we actually started multiple kernel threads looping on the RMP update function in the background and measure the average boot uh, VM boot time. So the graph in the right corner shows that the more threads we uh, doing RMP updates, the longer it takes to boot a VM. By the way, this graph is on a log scale, so it's a linear correlation. From the graph, we can see that there is a contention when doing RMP updates across different threads. Hmm. So now it's time to zoom in a little bit to, in the code to see what happens inside the RMP update function. This pseudo code shows that this helper function is not only calls the new x86 instructions in assembly code, but also do some tricks to modify the direct map. So basically we need to manipulate the page table to make sure that it syncs with the RMP table in terms of the page size. And the direct map change provide extra security protections as well. For more details, uh, you, can find it, uh, you can find it in the discussion in the mailing list. For now, we will actually focus on the things going on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we actually end up finding both functions that update the page table. We eventually go into a helper function called change page attribute. And this whole change page attribute function is protected behind a global spin lock uh, called, RMP, uh, called CPA lock for every single request to change the page attribute. And actually this, this doesn't smile right because we actually changing the attribute of different pages when booting concurrent VMs, okay? So naturally 
uh, our first thought is, can we actually remove the log as it seems unnecessary before digging more into the code to the whole, store, uh, to the whole history and the structure? We just remove it and did, did the experiment again. Surprisingly, there's no crash, no misbehave function. And as you can see from the red line in the graph, we got much, much better performance. This log seems to be the key factor that slows down the performance. So now the real challenge is, can we actually remove it? So after investigating more in the code, we think we, can, we actually can remove it without introducing safety issues. So that's, that's uh, first, let's go back to 2008 and see why this log was introduced in the first place. From the commit message, it said that uh, the log is introduced to solve a race condition where it's possible that one CPU is splitting the large page for changing attribute, uh, while the other CPU can also use the stale TLB entries to do another different attribute changing. So in this diagram, at first, CPU 0 and CPU 1 both have the TLB translations for the 2000 address, whose page size is 2 megabytes and has attribute X. And then CPU 0 tries to split the page to 4K and change the attribute to Y, while in the same time, the CPU 1 tries to change the page attribute to Z. According to the spec, it's possible that the TLB may subsequently contain both ordinary and large page translations for the same edges. And this is a real case, but when it happens, again, according to the spec in the commit message, it said that the CPU will have undefined behavior and can use neither of the translations in the TLB. So an undefined behavior from the CPU is definitely something we would like to avoid. But looking closer in the code, we actually found that this exact race condition has already been protected by another global spin log called PGD log today, thanks to a patch in 2018 that moves the TLB flash from outside of PGD log to inside. So this is a comparison between the code flow from 2008 and the code flow after 2018. Uh, hopefully this pseudo code inside the change page attribute function won't be hard to read. So in the first block read by the PGD log, it's trying to change the attribute of the large page, which is what CPU one is trying to is doing. And in the second block read by the PGD log, it's trying to split the large page if needed, and then change the attribute to the 4K page after releasing the PGD log, which is what CPU zero is doing. So in the left side of the, uh, so in the left side on the 2008 code, it's possible that after PGD unlock and before the TLB flash, the CPU zero has already split the large page and at the same time, the CPU one is changing the attribute of this large page. And this will lead to the race condition and two different translations in TLB and undefined behavior in the processor. However, in the right side on the 2018 code, there won't, this won't be happening because the CPU one would actually wait until the global TLB flash to change the attribute and after the global TLB flash and the CPU zero release the log, CPU one would not pass the check for changing the attribute for large page. Last one reached the code point for changing the attribute. So why did that patch make this change? I think the patch in 2018 was trying to do another optimize, to do an optimization for another problem. And the patch also mentioned in the commit message that this does put the global invalidate under the PGD log but that shouldn't matter. Interestingly, this does that does matter in our case. Okay, and uh, that's what we got so far. And interestingly, even after removing the CPA log, we can still see the degradation on the boot time when having multiple threads doing RMP updates. Although it's not a lin linear again, uh, it's not linear anymore. Uh, it's still a fifty percent increase when there are uh, sixty-four threads doing RMP updates in the background. There can be many follow-ups. One possibility is that the PGD log can actually be further optimized to a per PMD log, or it could be some hardware bottleneck, which is more generic topic for the overcommitment hardware. We think there, this uh, might be handled by some kind of rate limit enforcement, but there are definitely more experiments and explorations to go. Uh, one thing we want to call out here is that there are actually some patches in the mailing list called lazy accept, 
which might able to help might be able to help to spread the RMP updates across the VN life cycle instead of being crowded into the boot time during the boot time. This might also help to mitigate the issue. Okay, that's pretty much all the uh, the uh, content of my talk, and uh, in uh, we, we would like I uh, we will be sending out the patch to remove the CPA lock soon, and it will be great to uh, get some feedback in this talk. And we also would like to collect some thoughts about optimizing PG lock to per PMD lock, and as well as some thoughts on handling this hardware uh, resource over commitment uh, systematically. Yeah, and. Uh, Lastly, uh, we would like to thank everyone that makes this talk possible, uh, including David Kaplan, Bridget Singh, Fran van der Linden, and David Rianches. Okay, that's, let me go back to the previous discussions uh, and take questions here. Any questions? So um, when you remove the CPA log, wouldn't you see the quotation then on the PG log? That's yeah, that's why you want to split it up, right? Uh, actually, yeah. yeah, and actually, that that's our guess right now. Like we haven't did the experiment to to actually uh, factorize the uh, to actually optimize PG log to per PND log, but we do feel uh, uh, by scanning the code, we do think that uh, is it will actually uh, mitigate the issue. By having per PMD log, yeah. You haven't tried that yet. You don't have the per PMD log implemented yet, right? Right. Yeah, we haven't got this implemented. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting to see. Totally well, agree. <laughs> uh, so I I was talking to Dave Hansen at the break, and I don't. Dave, did, did you leave? I don't think I see him here. Um, they, they, he had some concern that CPUs have, in the past, have often had bugs in the sort of uh, the multi-match uh, case, right, where you have the 4K and the 2-meg page. And so his feedback was that even if the manual says that um, it won't cause a problem, he doesn't want to take that risk. Uh, so. I mean, another potential option, right, would be sort of a, a break before make, I think, right? If you were to uh, mark the entry that you're trying to use invalid, flush the TLB, and then mark the new entry valid, is that something you guys have thought about? Uh, actually, that's a good idea. We haven't. But uh, going back to the, the first concern here, I think uh, th the thing is that uh, this this PG log has already actually protect uh, uh, has already avoid the race condition that uh, mentioned in the previous uh, commit message. So I don't think there will be uh, even though after uh, even after removing the CPA log, there shouldn't be race condition uh, mentioned. Uh, this specific race condition where one CPU is you know splitting the large page and changing attribute, the other CPU is just changing the attribute. Uh, so even even after removing a CPA lock, this there won't be there still won't be any race condition about that scenario. So I guess that's I don't know that 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 might not uh, that might not imply that and we need uh, to take care of the some CPU uh, bugs, right? I see. Yeah, but but it, I guess if you want to get rid of the PGD lock, then you would have to. Uh, oh right, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I was also. Uh, is working. I, I, I was going to comment that uh, uh, coming back to Dave Hansen's concern, I wonder if we're more confident the the current CPU generations work the way the manual described. If we could have code in there that says, you know, if your CPU is this generation, then don't do the lock. I don't you know. You got to convince him of that. I, I got the feeling he wouldn't be easily convinced, but. Uh, something else we can do is we can try to <laughs> dig in Git history and see what exactly caused the introduction of the CPA, CPA lock and then try running the patch removing the lock on those CPUs who actually had the problem and see whether whether, whether that's still going to be okay. But 
I'm not sure we're going to find all the details. And I think the problem is this code is probably not called very often before SNP. So, yeah, I don't know that I don't know, it can be easily tested. Uh, so actually, some details on our side. Uh, we uh, we actually uh, try to remove the C, uh, remove the CPA log in uh, some of our test machines, and we did uh, the test. I, I think we did thousands of tests, and and mm, during like couple of weeks, and we didn't see any uh, uh, CPU crashes or you know kernel kernel panic or anything related to this. Uh, this removal of CPA log, so that actually gives us some confidence that okay, it's it, it might be okay to remove the CPA log. But again, this is just uh, this is uh, this 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 can be a uh, this race condition can be a rare case. So I don't know, maybe it can happen uh, much less often than a couple of weeks, thousands of tests within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Problem is, you probably need old hardware, which ah, probably ah. and the other problem is. If something fails, if there's not a machine check to get raised about it, it might even get silent, you know, like silently do a corrupted lookup. And how do you detect that? That, that makes sense. Yeah, but actually uh, going back to the very first question here, I, I think we have already dig into the, uh, the, the good history of, uh, of why we introduced the CPA log. And uh, it, I think it's kind of clear in, in the commit message that it's trying to solve one this specific race condition. And by, yeah, I think by an static analysis on the code, like mm, we should be able to get rid of this race condition as well, right? I think Boris is saying we should need to take it a step further and not just read the commit description, but actually see what hardware that they got the issue on and see if we can reproduce the error they got and then run the testing. Uh, his... yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least for SMP, Sorry, David, I think it, the connection is not good. I'm not able to hear your question. For SMP, mm -hmm. we know the oldest hardware we can run on isn't very old. So it's the limit. It's the point. He's breaking up. I'm pretty sure he's saying basically Jackie ran thousands of tests. I, I, Jackie ran it, I believe, on the AMD N3. So I think what David's trying to say is we know we can be confident that we can remove CPA lock just for the the this generation of hardware. I, sort of similar to the comment I made earlier, we can condition the removal on the. Right, that would be super ideal. Yeah, like uh, we can if we know like when in back in two thousand eight two thousand eight like what which which CPU family is having this uh this risk and this undefined behavior when there's uh multiple translations in TLB we can definitely you know condition on the on on those uh, CPU families or generations to remove the CPA log. Yeah definitely uh from from past experience I know Linux doesn't like conditional locks. It doesn't like if la lock. Ah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be hard to justify. Okay, um, I think it's time to wrap this discussion up. Thanks, Jackie, for your presentation.